Um, in this video, I'm going to go over reduction and oxidation reactions, or redox reactions. So a redox reaction is where electrons are being moved within the reaction. And a lot of the reactions that we've actually been discussing are actually redox reactions. Um, so it's a combination of a reduction and an oxidation reaction. So we call it redox for short. So one cannot happen without the other. So oxidation is the loss of electrons. So if we have an atom and it loses an electron, it has been oxidized. So this is an equation showing oxidation because we went from a zero charge to a plus one charge. So you know you have to take away electrons in order to gain that positive charge. So your electrons will show up on your product side. Now a reduction reaction is where you gain those electrons. So right here, this is a reduction reaction, and this happens when I have an atom, and it gains electrons, so it gains a negative charge. And I remember this by oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So in oxidation, I will lose electrons, and reduction, I will actually gain electrons. And I know it sounds like it should be the reverse, but it's really because of something called an oxidation number. So an oxidation number is very similar to a charge. Um, it's Okay, so not everything has a charge, but everything has an oxidation number. So if you're looking at a molecule or you're looking at an ion, it's basically telling you where the electrons are distributed among the atoms. So there are some rules to determine the oxidation numbers, and it's very similar to the charge. So if it's an ion, it's equal to the charge of the ion. If um, it's, un it's an element that it's uncombined, it's always zero. So that would be any kind of like metal, so aluminum by itself, O2, nitrogen gas, any of those things, the oxidation number is going to be zero. Uh, the sum of the oxidation numbers is always equal to the overall charge. So if you've got something like this, that means that overall the, ox overall, the uh, oxidation numbers will add up to zero. Now, if it happened to have a negative charge, it would add up to negative one. All right, so some elements are always the same oxidation number. So group one will always have a plus one. Um, hydrogen is in group one. It's almost always positive one. Now, a group two is always plus two. F is always minus one. O is almost always negative two. And if you have a binary compound with uh, metals, the group and so if you have a binary compound with a metal, the 17 elements, group 17, so I believe that's uh, 7A, will be negative 1. If you have group 16 or 6A, that's going to be negative 2. If you're in 5A or 15, that's going to be negative 3. So a lot of these are very, very similar to how you figure out the charge. All right, so let's determine the oxidation number here. All right, so let's look at potassium dichromate. So it's C2Cr2O7. So I'm going to figure out the oxidation number of each element here. So overall, the oxidation numbers should add up to the charge of the entire thing, which in this case will be zero. So let's look at what we have here. We have potassium and then we also have dichromate. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at this separately. So dichromate is one thing and then potassium is another. Well, potassium is in group one, so the oxidation number of group one is always plus one. So potassium's oxidation number is plus one. Um, now when I look at this, this is a polyatomic ion. So overall, all of the elements in here should add up to a negative 2. So if I'm looking at just the Cr2O7, all of these oxidation numbers should add up to negative 2. So I'm going to look at oxygen first because oxygen should be a negative 2. Normally oxygen is going to be negative 2. So now we just need to figure out what chromium is. So 
if I'm looking at oxygen, it's negative 2. There's 7 of those, so that's going to be negative 14. Well, I know overall it needs to add up to negative 2. So what plus negative 4, or negative 14, will equal negative 2? Well, I know that negative 12, or I'm sorry, positive 12, should add up to negative 2 here. So positive 12 will give me a negative 2 when I add it to negative 14. So I know that chromium here has to be positive 12 overall, but since there are two of those, each chromium has to be a positive 6 because what times 2 would give me a positive 12? So chromium here should be positive 6. So oxygen will be negative 2 and potassium is plus 1. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, sulfur and sulfur trioxide. So there's no charge here. So the overall, it needs to be zero. So um, oxygen is going to be a negative two here. There's three of those, so that's going to be a negative six. Well, I need a positive six to cancel that out and to equal zero. And since sulfur um, only has one atom here, sulfur's oxidation number is positive six. All right, let's look at the next one. And I do suggest if you're watching the video, it's a good idea to always, if I've got more than one example, I do one, you try it, and then watch the video. So I would advise you pause, try it on your own, and then see if you're right. Now, um, this one actually does have a typo. It's actually supposed to be K2O. All right, so let's look at this one. I want to look at oxygens. Well, potassium is always in group one. So it's plus one, and there's two of those, so that's going to be plus two. So oxygen here, in this case, is going to be negative two to cancel that out. So remember, we're trying to get it to equal the charge of the compound, which is zero. So oxygen should be negative two, like it normally is. All right, nitrogen and ammonium right here. All right, so we have an overall charge of positive one. So we need to look at the molecule here. Uh, hydrogen is usually positive one. Okay, so hydrogen is in uh, group one. It's usually positive one. Oops. There are four of those, so it's going to be a positive four. So remember, overall, it's going to be a positive one charge here. So what plus four will give me a positive one? Well, a negative three would. Since there's only one nitrogen atom, each one has to be negative three. So nitrogen's ON number is negative three. All right, let's look at cobalt and this, this compound right here. Cl6 with a minus three charge. So overall, it needs to be negative three. It'll add up to negative three. All right, so chlorine's in group 7A. And since it's a binary ionic compound, I can say that chlorine's is, uh, oxidation number is negative one. That's in your set of rules right there. There are six of those, so that's going to be negative six. So I need it to equal negative three overall. So what plus negative six will give me a negative three? Well, that should be a positive three. And since there's only one cobalt, each one has to be a positive three. So cobalt's number is positive three here. All right, so <clears throat> now what do we do with these numbers? Well. When we're looking at re uh, redox reactions, we need to determine the oxidation numbers in order to figure out if it's being oxidized or reduced. So oxidation numbers allow us to keep track of the electrons. So what we do in a reaction when I'm just trying to figure out what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, I will look at the oxidation number. And if the oxidation number 
if it goes down, it's been reduced, which is why they actually call it uh, reduction. So if the oxidation number of that element goes down, it has been reduced. If the oxidation number has gone up, it has been oxidized. So that's why we assign these oxidation numbers. We're trying to see, does the oxidation number go up or down in the reaction? And that'll tell us if it's being reduced or oxidized. So let's do that first. Let's determine the oxidation numbers for everything. All right, so potassium is by itself, okay? So that means that when it's by itself, the oxidation number is just zero. Same thing for chlorine here. Even though it's a molecule of two, it's still by itself in its elemental state, so it's zero. So now when we look at KCl, it's different. It's in a compound. Potassium's in group one, so it's plus one. And chlorine should be a negative one to cancel that out. So potassium here went from zero to a positive one. And then chlorine here went from a zero to a negative one. Well, when we look at this, what is being reduced? Well, chlorine's number went from a zero to a negative one, so it is being reduced. Chlorine is reduced. Okay, so in then this case, potassium went from a zero to a positive one. So that means the oxidation number went up, so it's oxidized. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually write half reactions for each of these separate reactions. So we've got a reduction reaction here and an oxidation reaction. So we're basically going to be looking at the oxidation numbers and we're going to be putting electrons where they should be going because that's what's happening here. Electrons are moving around. So let's look at chlorine. Well, on this side, chlorine is Cl. And it's Cl2, though. So if we've got a Brinkelhoff, we're going to write that in the reaction. And then on the other side, on the product side, it becomes Cl-. So we need to decide where do the electrons go in this reaction. Well, it went from a 0 to a negative 1, which means that I am adding electrons. So the electrons are being added to the Cl2. So I'm going to add an electron here. So Cl2 plus one electron equals Cl minus. Well, I can't just leave it like this. It's unbalanced. I've got two Cls over here and one over there. So I'm going to put the two to go right there to balance those out. Well, in a redu uh, reduction reaction and an oxidation reaction, the charges have to be equal as well on both sides. So it's not just the number of atoms this time, it's going to also be the charge. So we need to look at what charges we have on both sides. So I've got two Cl minuses, so that's a negative two charge that I have here. And Cl2 is just zero, but one electron would give me a negative one. I'm not balanced here. So that means that I'm going to put a two right here to make it negative two. So now I've got negative 2 on this side, and I've also got a negative 2 on this side. So it's balanced. So this is my full reduction or half reaction for chlorine being reduced. All right, so now let's look at pot uh, yeah, potassium. Okay, so potassium on this side is just K, and on this side it becomes K+. Plus. So I need to decide where do the electrons go here because electrons are being moved. So it goes from a zero to a positive one charge. So in order for an atom to become positive, you have to remove electrons, which means that the electrons will be on the product side. Okay, so now I need to make sure my atoms are balanced and also my charge is balanced. So zero, zero charge on this side. And if I've got a plus one and a negative one, that's going to add up to a zero charge. So I've got a zero on this side, a zero on this side. My charges are balanced. And I've also got one K on each side. So I am balanced. So this is the full half reaction for oxidation. And then this is the reaction for reduction. Now, if I was going to write the net 
redox reaction, or the net ionic reaction, I could combine these two reactions together. The only thing is, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the electrons cancel. So in order to write out the net redox reaction, we have to make sure the electrons will cancel. So I've got two electrons on my reactant side here. So I should have two electrons in the product side to cancel. I don't have two. So since I do not have two here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything in the equation by two. So it should be 2K, 2K plus, plus two electrons. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying everything by two so that the electrons will balance out. So I've got to cancel them when I write my net redox reaction. So it has to be that I've got two electrons on my reactant side here and two electrons on my product side. All right, so now when I combine them, anything that appears on both the reactant side and the product side can be removed. And then everything else will just come and fall into the net redox reaction. So my electrons will end up canceling, like right here. So it's going to be nothing else cancels, so it's Cl2 because that's on my reactant side. There's nothing else here on the reactant side, so I go to this one. Okay, so now I've got no other reactants. So now it's 2Cl minus, nothing else there, and then go to the other product here. And that's going to give me my net redox ionic reaction. All right, so let's look at another one. Let's look at this one. All right, so, and I suggest that you try this on your own. So pause the video, try it, and then um, let me go over it. So first thing we do, we need to decide what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So we look at the ON numbers. Uh, magnesium's a zero on this side, and oxygen is also zero because it's by itself. So now we look on this side. Well, magnesium and oxygen are being combined. Uh, oxygen is usually negative two, and magnesium's a plus two to cancel that out. So when I look at it, magnesium goes from oops, zero to a plus two, and then oxygen goes from a zero to a negative two. So the reduction that's happening here is oxygen. Oxygen is being reduced. It goes from a zero to negative two. The oxidation number went down, so it's being reduced. What's being oxidized here is the magnesium. So magnesium went from a zero to a plus two, so the oxidation number went up, so it's oxidized. All right, so um, when I look at this, reduction, okay, so oxygen, when I'm writing the half reactions, oxygen is O2 on this side, and then it becomes O with a minus two on this side. So we need to add electrons. So if it goes from a zero to a negative two in order to become negative, you have to add electrons. So I cannot leave this like this. So we've got two oxygens on this side and one on this side, so I'm going to put a two on this side. So now my atoms balance, but my charge does not. I've got two times negative two, which gives me a negative four. And I've only got zero plus a negative one charge on this side. So I need to have three more electrons on this side to make it equal negative four. So I need to have four electrons. So four times negative one would give me negative four. And then that would balance out the negative four I have in my product side. All right, so now let's look at magnesium. So magnesium is on this side, and it's just Mg. And on the other side, it's Mg with a positive 2. So now we need to figure out where the electrons go. 
since it went from a 0 to a positive 2, we are taking away electrons to make that happen. So that means that my electrons are on my product side. So now I need to make sure my atoms balance. They do, but my charge does not. I have a plus 2 and a negative 1 here. So that's going to be a positive 1 on this side and then a charge of 0 on the other side. So what I need to do is I need to actually have two electrons here. And then that's going to make it equal negative 2, which is a 0. So 0 on this side, 0 on this side, and I'm good. All right, so. All right, so now I need to look at the number of electrons. So if I'm going to write my full redox net reaction, I need to combine them together, but to do that, I have to make sure my electrons cancel. I've got four electrons here, two electrons here. So since I've only got difference of two, I need to multiply this entire equation by two. So it's going to be 2mg produces 2mg2+, plus, and that's going to give me four electrons. Remember, I'm doing this because the electrons will end up canceling in the net redox reaction. So now I'm going to combine them. So my electrons, I have got four electrons on my reactant side now, four electrons on my product side. They will cancel. They need to be on opposite sides. And then everything else just gets combined. So O2 plus 2Mg produces, so I've got a product here. And... Oops. There we go. So that's my net redox reaction for this equation. All right, so let's look at the next thing. Let's look at this one. This one is a little bit different because there is another element here. So when you have a redox reaction, only one item is going to be reduced and one item is going to be oxidized. So let's look at the oxidation numbers first. Mg is by itself, so it's zero. HCl, hydrogen is normally plus one, so chlorine is negative one here. MgCl2, well, chlorine in the binary compound is just going to be negative one. There's two of those, so we have a negative two. So we need a positive two to make the whole thing equal zero. So that's going to be positive two in this case. And hydrogen is by itself here, so it's zero. All right, so. Chlorine is negative 1 here, and it's negative 1 on this side. It's not negative 2. Each chlorine is still negative 1. So chlorine is a spectator. It's not really participating in the reaction. So it's not going to be important for our redox reaction. It's there, but it's not really doing anything. All right, so now let's look to see what's happening. Magnesium went from a zero to a plus two. So magnesium here is being oxidized. It goes, the number goes up. Okay, so it's Mg. And then for the reduction reaction, we need to see what's going, uh, which one has the oxidation number going down. Remember chlorine, it's the staying the same, nothing is happening to it. So we went from a positive one for hydrogen here to a zero. So hydrogen in this case is going to be reduced. All right, so um, now if we write the half reactions, let's look at magnesium. Magnesium was by itself on the reactant side and it went to a positive two. All right, so when it goes from a zero to a positive two, I'm taking electrons out of it, which means that they should be on the product side. And I can look at this two different ways. I can say, okay, well, I know that I've got a zero charge over on this side, so I need a zero charge on this side. So I've got a plus two and a minus one. I, need, I know I'm gonna need another electron. Or I could also look at the charge and say, if I've got a plus two, I'm losing two electrons, so it should be two. So 
if you don't see it that way, you can just make sure the charges equal zero on both sides by adding the two in front of that electron. So plus two plus a negative two would give me a charge of zero, and then I have a zero charge on this side. All right, so now let's look at hydrogen. Hydrogen is plus one here, and on this side, it becomes zero. And it's also H2 on that side. So I know that if I go from a plus one to a zero, I have to be adding electrons here. All right, so now um, let's make sure my atoms balance and they don't. So I'm gonna put a two here, but now my charges don't balance. So I've got two times positive one, so that's positive two plus a negative one. So that gives me a positive one here and a zero on this charge. So I need to add another electron to this. All right, so I've got positive two, negative two. That's a zero charge overall on this side and a zero on this side. So that's my half reaction for hydrogen. Now, if I want my net redox reaction, I'm gonna combine them make sure the electrons cancel first. They do in this equation. We have two and two, so I'm good on that. So now I can just cancel those and put everything together. So Mg plus whatever's on this reactant side, 2H plus. I've got this product side now and H2. So that's my net redox reaction. And I'm not including chlorine in it because chlorine is a spectator. It's not being reduced, it's not being oxidized, so it's not going to appear in the oxidation um, half reaction, reduction half reaction, or the net redox. It's just a spectator, nothing is really happening to it. All right, so now let's look at something different. Let's look at this. This is called disproportionation, and this is where you have a reaction where one thing is actually being oxidized and reduced. So you have one element and it's being oxidized and reduced. So this is an equation where this might happen. So let's determine the oxidation number so I can show you what's happening. So right here, oxygen is negative two. Now overall, the whole thing needs to add up to a negative one charge. So that means that chlorine here, since there's only one of them, what plus a negative two will give me a negative one charge? Well, that's gonna be positive one. So if I have a negative two for the oxygen, and I know it's gotta equal negative one, what plus negative two would give me a negative one? It would be a positive one. I'm not, I'm not looking at the fact that there's three chlorines here, or three molecules here. I'm just looking at the charges. All right, so let's do the same thing here. Oxygen is negative two. So chlorine, overall, this whole thing has to add up to negative one, just like it did here. I've got six, or three of those. So negative two times three would give me a negative six. Well, what plus negative six would give me a negative one? Well, that should be a positive five. And since there's only one chlorine, each one is going to be positive five here. All right, and then here, well, it's a monoatomic ion, so really it's just a negative one. So when you look at this, oxygen is staying the same here. It's a spectator. It goes from negative two to negative two, nothing's happening to it, but chlorine on the reactant side is positive one, and then it becomes a positive five here. So the oxidation number went up, so it's oxidized, but if you look right here, it went down from a plus one to a negative one, so it's also being reduced. This is what we call disproportionation.